Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Honda Chris here with Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And here behind me, I have a brand new HRV EXL. I'm going to show you guys how to customize your guys' vehicle settings so when you drive off the lot, you're set for success. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are right inside the HRV. We have it on and running here for you guys. The vehicle's in park. That's important because you cannot access this stuff unless the vehicle's in park. So we're at the first page here on the touch screen. Everything's going to happen right here on the touch screen. So that's why we're focused there. We're going to scroll over to the second page to vehicle settings, all right? Now, you'll see right up here, there's going to be some photos, stuff like that. So this is going to be the groups that you can actually kind of change some of your settings. So the first one's going to be a TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring System Calibration. You have an indirect tire pressure monitoring system right here. So it won't tell you which tire is low. It's going to tell you, hey, there's a huge change, or hey, just go out there and double check your tire pressure to make sure everything's good. Once that's done and everything's good, you made the adjustments you need to, all you have to do to reset that light is hit calibrate, okay? So there we go, pretty nice and easy. Next one is gonna be your driver's assist system setup. This is where you guys are gonna customize all of your Honda Sentient features, okay? So we're gonna select that, work our way down, okay? What I like about this, and it already shows you what's already selected over here on the right hand side, okay? Then also, as you select one of these bad boys, like your forward collision warning distance, it gives you a short summary of what that setting is, so you don't have to memorize all that stuff right there, okay? You, as you go back and revisit, nice summary. So this is your forward collision. As you can see, it'll give you audible and visual alerts before you hit an object, okay? So imagine if we're driving down the road, as soon as you're gonna hit a vehicle in front of you or an object, it's gonna stop you and warn you, stuff like that. So how soon do you want it to start doing that stuff? I'm gonna keep it on normal, just because, you know, the Honda has it set to that for, uh, as a default. So you may hit normal, from there, then hit the back button, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I'm kind of uh, coming, you know, getting done with the cold, so just bear with me here, okay? Now, the next option is going to be ACC Ford Vehicle Detection Beep. So, ACC is your adaptive cruise control. I'm going to assume you guys have already watched my walk around video, already know what the adaptive cruise control is, okay? If not, it's going to be down below in the description, a video link, okay? So, this is simply as a car gets in and out of range of your adaptive cruise control. You want it to beep at you. So imagine like you're here talking to whoever's in the passenger side. You're not paying attention, but you feel the car kind of speed up and slow down automatically by itself. You're like, oh, what's going on? Well, let's say a car jumps in the way. I'm over here talking to whoever, not paying attention as much. I feel the car slowing down. It beeps at me to alert me to let me know what's going on. All right. So you guys can choose. You want this on or off. I'm going to turn everything on solely just case, you know, the next person wants to take this out for a test drive and experience all that stuff so they can experience that and come up with an opinion on their own. Your road departure is going to be what keeps you in the, in the middle of your lane or on the road. Okay. So you can change the sensitivity on that narrow, normal, wide, or warning only. So it would just warn you. It's up to you to bring yourself back into the center of your lane. I'm going to keep it on normal. <clears throat> All right, next one's going to be lane keeping assist right here. So imagine with your traffic jam assist or your lane keep assist for your driving down the road when it's activated, that's going to be the feature that keeps you in the center too. Okay. And when you go out of your lane, you want it to beep at you. Oop, here we go, right out of the lane, beep, 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 as it brings you back. Blind spot. So your blind spot information system is going to be right here on the side mirror. It's going to be a little orange light that lights up on the side mirror, as you can see the little photo over there. So when you're driving and you're city driving and highway driving, it won't work in the parking lot, so you have to be going a certain speed for it to work. I also have the video down below in the description if you guys want to see that in action for the first time. You guys are more welcome to see that, okay? Now, when the car is in your blind spot, that's going to come up bright orange. When you turn on your turning indicator while a vehicle is in your blind spot, it's going to beep at you. Tell you, hey, don't turn yet. All right? So this is the setting that most people keep it on. So I'm going to leave it right there as well. We're going to scroll down to your traffic sign recognition display. This is simply on or off. So as you're driving down the road, this front camera right up here on the windshield that does a lot of your safety features, it finds a speed limit sign and throws it right down below your digital speeder meter on your driver's interface screen, okay? So on or off, I'm gonna keep it on. A lot of people like seeing the speed limit, having that nice little reminder up there. Next option is gonna be, do you want the car to warn you when you are speeding? So it finds a speed limit sign, let's say it says it's 35 up there, and you're going 36, it's gonna flash at you to let you know, hey, you're speeding, okay? I know some people want to wait right away from, from the get-go, say, nope, I don't want this on. 
But if you keep this on, you can customize when it's gonna warn you, okay? <clears throat> you wanna warn you at your speed limit, okay? Three, five, or 10 above the speed limit sign. So let's say it finds the speed limit, it says 35, you put it to 10, you go at eight above, it's not gonna warn you, okay? So you guys can choose what you wanna do. I'll look away, I won't tell, and you guys are happy. Driver's attention monitor right here. So pretty much as you're driving down the road with your safety features and all this and that, and then the car also knows when you're doing a good job and a bad job at driving, okay? So let's say you're doing a really te terrible job of driving. You probably want the car to do everything in its power to alert you and say, hey, Chris, you need to pull over and take a coffee break, right? So I'm gonna turn this bad boy on. A lot of times people won't experience that, but just in case for those long trips, I'm gonna do it. All right, and there we are. Now, from here, we're going to go to meter setup. Select that bad boy. We're going to start from the top and work our way down to the bottom, okay? So, first one is the outside temperature display. You will have that right there in the bottom center of your driver's interface screen. You can fine-tune that bad boy if you want to, okay? Within a five-degree five degree swing, either way from there. <clears throat> I'm going to keep it on default. Um, next one is going to be a trip A and trip B. If you guys are really big on your trip A's and trip B's, this, this way you can set it to automatically reset when you refuel or when you turn off the vehicle or just have it a manual reset from that point, okay? We'll just hit the back button. Trip B is gonna be exactly the same thing, okay? We're gonna back out from there. Next option, it's gonna be adjusted alarm volume. So as you see right there, it's gonna be like your warnings, it's gonna be turning indicators, all that kind of good stuff when the door is open, all those settings from there, you can adjust how loud you want these bad boys to be. So you want it low, medium, or high for really loud. I'm gonna hit the back button. Next one is gonna be a fuel efficiency backlight. This is more of a visual coach, this is a visual thing. Um, so when you're driving down the road and you're being fuel efficient, you're gonna get a green bar that's gonna be above your digital speeder meter, okay? So you guys will probably see that as you take it out for a test drive. Unless it's off, then you won't see it. But when you're not being fuel efficient, that green bar just goes away, okay? So if you guys are trying to level up your fuel efficiency game, boom, this might be a nice little visual coach to help you guys out, okay? So I'm gonna keep this bad boy on. We're gonna scroll right back down, turn by turn. This is for like your navigation, stuff like that. Give you a heads up, say, hey, turn left in 100 feet or wherever it is. So it's kind of nice to give you that heads up. Speed and distance, miles per hour to kilometers. Hey, I'm here in Iowa, so we use miles per hour, so that's what we're gonna keep. Tachometer. So this is simply turning it on or off your tachometer. It's gonna be on the left-hand side of your driver's interface screen, okay? So if you don't like that sporty look of that tachometer with always having the numbers and stuff right up there, regardless of what you have selected on that menu on the left-hand side, this is where you can turn that off, okay, if you don't like that. So you can clean it up, it's less clutter, and all of that from there, okay? So I'm gonna keep it on. So the next person can decide, hey, I like this, or hey, I don't like it, I can show them how to remove it. Next one's gonna be your rear seat reminder. So let's say someone jumps in the back seat. Now I threw something back there. Um, then as we stop somewhere, I shot the car. Uh, right there on the driver's interface screen is gonna be a reminder saying, hey, double check your rear seat, you know, for objects and passengers. So yeah, why not? Let's keep it up there because sometimes I'm pretty forgetful. I may have some supplies in there. My kids would let me know when I forget about them. All right, keyless access setup, okay? So this is gonna be the first setting is your door unlock mode. This is when you get the key fob with you in your purse, your pocket, your jacket, you walk up, put your hand in the handle, right? Because you have the key fob with you. Do you want all doors to unlock or just the driver's side door? Well, if it's just me, I'm gonna do that, but I can see with my son, a couple of my kids, oh man, they're gonna complain, especially when it's raining out there, right? So there we go, we do all doors from that point. Now since when you put your hand in the handle, there's going to be a delay Okay, two as well, when the door's unlocked. So I'll put my hand on the handle, one, two, got one of the lights to flash, psh, psh. so Cameron knows the door, the door's unlocked, he can yank on an unlocked door handle, I like that. My biggest pet peeve is having someone yank on a locked door handle, it just bugs me. Now to also help the kiddos out, or my new friends and you know, all that come along, I want the car to beep at them too as well. Put my hand in the handle, boop, it unlocks or locks, so they know what's going on from there. So there we go. Remote start. 
Would you like to keep your remote start enabled? Yes, I like to have it available at any given time. So I'm gonna keep that on, okay? My walk around video will show you guys um, how to use your remote start, okay? Lockout prevention, this is pretty much just gonna help prevent you from accidentally locking your keys in the car. Then also, for example, like my wife, she has this huge purse, okay? Uh, when you have three kids and you pretty much, you know, take care of them, control their events, you need a big purse. So anyways, she puts her key fob and her 21 CRV down in her purse. And sometimes when she gets in and out of it, especially out of the car, it's buried, or, or the fob's buried in her purse. So the, key, the car cannot tell like, hey, where is the fob? Is it still in the car? Is it out of the car? So it makes this little funny sound like do-do-do-do-do. It's telling you, hey, come back here and double check an X amount of time. Make sure I'm not locking your keys in the car. That's what this is too as well, okay? So if you bury your fob, quite a bit in like in a book bag, a gym bag, a purse, whatever, just let you know sometimes you cannot always find it, okay? And there we go. That's going to be a lockout prevention. So that was pretty nice and easy. Now from here, we're gonna to go to light setup, okay? We're gonna start from the top again and work our way down towards the bottom. So you got auto high beams. You want these high, high beams automatically come on or off? Yes, we do. <clears throat> now you enter a light dimming time. This is when you shut off the car, you shut the driver's side door, then boom, 30 seconds, whatever you set, your enter lights will turn off from here. So headlight timer. Once again, I shut off the car, I shut the driver's side door, time starts, you want your headlights to turn off in zero, 15, 30, or 60 seconds, okay? So this would be nice to adjust just in case if you go to work late at night, you get home late at night, it's not a well-lit area, gives you a little more light time to see what you're doing. Your light sensitivity. So when your lights are set to auto, as they should be, um, how soon do you want your headlights to come on and off, okay? Between day and night time. I'm gonna keep it a medium. This is the nice setting too as well. So when your headlights on set to auto and you turn on your wipers, you know, just if it's raining during the day or who knows what, your headlights will automatically come on, okay? So you want that on or off. Now from here, we're gonna select door and window setup. We're gonna start from the top and work our way down. You get auto door lock. So we just got in the car, you better to drive it off to show it to friends and family. How soon do you guys want your doors to lock? You want it with speed or when you shift from park to like drive in reverse or have that off and just when you hit the darn lock button. Next one's gonna be your door unlock. Okay, so we just arrived here at Randy Kill Honda. You guys have a question for me or wherever you guys are going, right? When do you want your doors to unlock? So the very first one's a great option. Uh, all, all doors when driver door opens up. So that's great, I can turn off the car, I put it in park, I can mind my surroundings, if it's somewhere new, if it's just me. Uh, but if I have a front seat passenger, they still can open up their door, they can get in and out just fine. It's just the kids in the back. You know, if I got my kids in the back, the doors remain locked until one of us open up our front doors, okay? Now, the second one's gonna be when you shift from park, or when you shift to park, I mean, I'm sorry, when you shift to park, it locks it all up, or when you shut off the vehicle, or have it off. So what would work great for you guys? Now the next one's gonna be a walk away auto lock feature, okay? So this is when you have the key fob with you in your purse, your pocket, your jacket, you get out of the car with that fob, you get 10 feet away, Boom, it locks all the doors for you. So that way you never have to second guess, did I lock my doors, did I not? I have no clue, it's taken care of. So pretty snazzy. I'm gonna turn this bad boy on so when I'm done with the video, I know this car is locked, okay? Your lock presetting. So lock presetting is gonna be pretty nice because you know with older cars, you cannot lock the doors on them with a fob until all the doors are locked, okay? So for example, let's say I got my driver's side door shut Someone has another door open, I can hit the lock button to preset that lock. So as soon as they shut that door, all the doors automatically lock. So this is a great feature just in case if you don't want the walk away, the walk away auto lock feature enabled, okay? So, <clears throat> kinda nice. I'm gonna keep it on though. Let's do it. Now, when you hit lock and unlock stuff like that, I'm assuming you probably want the lights to flash at you, right? To let you know, hey, you know, everything is locked up and good to go or unlocked. 
So now we've got the window control here. I actually have this uh, kind of in a few videos. I'll put one down below in the description for you guys so you can see it in action. So you can actually roll down your windows and open up your moonroof all with your key fob. So imagine those really hot summer days, right? Oh man, you had to, uh, like, I can see like my son playing soccer. We're out there, we're about to head to the car. I know the game's about over. I want the hot air to get out of the car. So I just hit uh, double tap unlock twice and hold it on the second time, it rolls the windows down, okay? Now sometimes some people have a hard time with this. They didn't know this feature even exists. They actually bumped it and hold it down for a split second and cracks the windows open. Oh man, and they uh, keep this car parked outside. The next day they come out to it and after it rained and snow, they got that all that in the car. So HUD is allowing you to deactivate this feature if you want to. If you guys had a hard time to understand what I was trying to share with you guys, look at my video down below. Give you guys a nice visual, okay? I'm trying to explain this stuff as I'm still uh, have a head cold. So check that out. All right, now we're gonna come right over here to maintenance. So all of your regular maintenance and stuff that needs to be done, if you need to reset that stuff, it's right there for you guys. Super nice and easy, okay? All right, well, there's the video, guys. Congratulations again on your new HRV EXL, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.